We are live. Hi, everyone. I'm just waiting to see for you to join the Instagram one. Okay, let's see. Uh -huh. Am I on or do I have to push? Okay, go live. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm wonderful. It's so nice oh. to be with you here today. Yeah, I'm so excited to talk to you. Uh, so everyone, this is Valerie Romanoff. I will let you go ahead and just tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, I am a musician and a music producer, a guitarist. I am also um, a I like to speak about music and mindfulness and meditation. I, for most of my career, I've led an amazing big band called the Starlight Orchestra, a big shiny party band that travels all over the country and around the world playing for big, wonderful events. And it's a very, it's a band that has a lot of, a lot of talent in it, a lot of music, a lot of singers and dancers. And so some of my career has really been about creating experiences for people at live events. And my sort of spiritual journey was on the other side of, of things. And over the past 10 years, they've really coincided. And the mu music for meditation and mindfulness that I produce has the same intention, really, as the music that I do for private parties. Right. And so I, had, I do both right now. And now it's turned into Groove into Bliss is the live and streamed concert idea that takes it people through a whole energetic journey right so that's, that's so cool i'm so excited to hear all about it today <laughs> so we can just jump right into questions uh and for everyone watching if you have any questions just feel free to throw them in the comments uh let's get started yes. so first of all what inspired you to want to create a, a virtual version of this music festival. Ah, well, for the past few years, I've been, I spend a lot of time in Sedona, Arizona. That's my home away from home. And I've been going out there for 20 years. And the first part of the journey was I would go out there and kind of fly under the radar. That's where I would recharge and rejuve and kind of go into retreat. And then I would come home and come back to New York and put all of that energy into manifesting. And, you know, I started my band, and I built my business and I uh, started to create music and then I would go back to, but after a while, when I did my first album, I decided to do my CD release show in Arizona in Sedona. And from that time on, I started doing music there. So the past few years, um, my girlfriend, Shay Condro was producing a month long series of events every September because September has the International Day of Peace in it, September 21st, it's a UN holiday and it's a big deal. It's a national, this is the 39th anniversary of it. And it's a, a call for nations and people all over the world to put down their arms and open their hearts. And, and there's a lot of programs all over the globe to bring awareness to this idea of peacefulness. And I was producing a concert every year for the past three years in Sedona and some of some of my friends from New York, my musicians would fly out there and we did a concert. We were planning to do a lovely concert, but of course everything, like all other live events, got shut down because of the situation that we find ourselves in in our world. Mm -hmm. And so everything really has gone online. So we decided let's do not only a concert, but let's open it up. Let's do a festival and let's hold hold that space for hours in the, in the day and have all kinds of programming, have people speaking, have some guided meditations, have different kinds of music, do some chanting music, some kirtan. And of course, a lot of the music that I write is not only meditation music, but it's fun, positive message, funky songs that have ideas in them that help us remember the things that are important that help us on our journey. So the idea was, let's do, Shay said, let's do a whole festival. And at first I was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? You know, for <laughs> Five hours, but I started opening up to to friends and to to people in the in the field. You know, the kind of mind body spirit field, which is where I spend a lot of my time, and uh, everybody was receptive. So it's turning out to be a lovely lineup that's going to really go through the whole still chill thrill experience. Right, it's so cool. It looks awesome. I can't believe you're 
you know, filling that much time with, with people doing stuff the whole time. It's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, we have it, you know, really pretty much dialed in to every five minutes, every 10 minutes. This is what happens because we want it to, we want it to, we want people to stay engaged and we want to have a variety of information and talent for them. So um, I've done, you know, it, my, my career has been very much in live events and I've participated in a lot of events that had to the minute, you know, a lot of big charity bowls where people were speaking and they was dancing and they were sitting. So I have some experience with that and uh, it, it, we're really excited about it. Yeah, it's super exciting. It sounds awesome. Um, the next question is, I know that you've you've told me that you've won awards for your meditation music. Uh, can you speak a little bit about the importance of meditation and mindfulness? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, I, I would say that I would start with the premise that everything is energy. I love, there's a, a phrase by Esther Hicks, and she says, we are vibrational beings in a vibrational universe. So I everything is vibration and energy. And there's there's a lot that's going on internally that we sometimes can lose sight of because we're so busy in our outer world. And when we're focusing and concentrating on the stories and the dramas of our life, we sometimes forget to listen and, and we forget that there's all kinds of wisdom and information that is inside of us. And the only way that we can access that is by listening and asking, but and listening. And the way we listen is we have to stop the outward motion, even if just for a few minutes every day. And that's really what meditation is. Meditation is going into a quiet place so that you can receive and that you can hear what's going on. So I'm a, a big fan of meditation because I believe that our inner world is where a lot of the magic is. And we have to go there in order to have, um, I think, a deeper and a higher experience in our lives. It's, it's almost like, you know, fueling, fueling up the, the machine, you know, but with, um, it's it's like being in nature. It's like when we're in nature, we can really kind of sink into that and connect and calibrate. And the connection between music and meditation is that meditation, music has all kinds of vibrations. Peaceful music has the kinds of vibrations that we can calibrate to, to slow ourselves down in order to enter that state of receiving. Right. So it was my idea to start to produce some music that assisted that, that really helped that, that when you listen to the music, you're like, oh, it makes it a little easier to sink in. And once you sink in, there's this deliciousness, you know, that happens. For me, I'm, um, I would call myself a multi-genre artist because I'm, in my, in my core, I'm like, funk and R&B and the rhythms. And as a matter of fact, one of the um, awards for the album that you mentioned, this, this is the album, it's called Healing Music Volume Two. And it it won for best meditation, but it also won for best world fusion, which really, really pleased me because I was going for that world sound and the the coming together of East and right. West and bringing, and bringing the exotic instruments that are known to have sacred, sound because I think that we just instinctively will gravitate toward and calibrate to and align with the vibrations around us. So then it becomes our choice and our responsibility, you know, to what kind of vibrations do we want to align with? Right. That's what leads into the peace thing. Because, you know, there's a lot of we talk about we want more peace and love in, in the world and it starts with what's inside of us because we can want that as much as possible. But if we're not in that place, what we're going to be putting out and the vibrations that we're going to send out are going to be what it is that's inside of us. And so if we're confused, if we're upset, if we're worried, if we're fearful, that's the vibrations that we're going to put out. So the practice and the the, the practice really is finding that peaceful place inside of ourselves and then emitting these vibrations because we can all do that and it makes us feel better and it just floods our our planet with you know positive vibrations which of course everybody feels better so yeah. the music yeah so one thing leads to the other to the other you know the music mm -hmm. helps 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 us feel good and it helps us shift and it helps put things in balance that's kind of exactly what the next question was was how your music weaves into you know, your love for meditation, which is so inspiring to just like listen to you talk about because I am not, 
I am not a meditator, but now I might be. Well, well, you know, thank, th I'm so glad that you said that because, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they think they can't do it. They think their minds are too busy. But the thing about meditation is really what it, what it is, is it's just the practice of shifting your mind back to stillness. And so people think that they're not expect that they're expected to not have other thoughts and not let their mind wander. But that's part of it. I mean, that's certain. That's what it is. It's like our mind wanders, but then we just gently bring it back. And by doing that one practice, it strengthens that muscle so that we learn to shift our attention. And then that carries through in all of the places in our lives where there's stressors or where we're where we feel upset it's like or we we're going to be triggered and we're going to jump to do something habitual that might be negative we can just we have that ability now from having practiced it in sitting in silence for five minutes or 15 minutes we have we remember oh i could do that i'm just going to i'm going to think about something positive i'm just going to breathe you know because breathing and breath uh, you know, we think about yoga. Yoga has become so mainstream, which is something that's so exciting to me because I feel like it's not so far fetched. You know, we don't have to think that we're going up, you know, in a cave on a mountain and, and, and be monks and, you know, to be able to just find some stillness. So anybody can meditate, you know, and and some people meditate by walking. Some my mother said to me, I meditate. She's like, when I'm doing the dishes, that's my meditation. And I and I I, I totally I'm down with that. I believe in that. Um, and I think that the more into it you get, you know, the more you realize your everything starts feeling better in your life when you have a little bit more control over that habitual mind. Right. I do. A I guess I would call it meditation. I do like a guided sleep kind of Definitely. noise machine thing. Uh huh. So I listen to, well, yeah. I listen to a lot of guided meditations. I mean, I do a lot of silent meditations, but I love the guided meditations because they, you know, they help and, and everybody has a little different perspective. And it, however you do it, there's a million ways to do it. You know, just going out in nature. I spend a lot of time on a lake. I live on a lake and I love to paddleboard. And I like to go out every evening right around sunset time and just be out there on that lake. And I just, I just feel like I'm kind of like that bridge between heaven and earth you know i just feel grounded and open and you know just that energy moving through so peacefully i think it's 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 a way to you just deal with everything else in your life in a better way because you're taking a few moments just to relax release because when we're stressed out we, we tense and when we're tense the energy doesn't flow and the blood doesn't flow and everything just doesn't flow easily and so we have to just remember I, I believe that we know everything anyway. And I know that when I write songs and when I think about lyrics and I, I, I'm i thinking about just reminders, things to help trigger, oh yes, I know that. Oh, that makes so much sense. You know, it's like, the, the, because the wisdom is, is so simple. It really is simple. It's kindness, it's compassion, it's being kind to ourselves. And that's a huge thing, you know, the, the love of oneself because we don't give that to ourselves. We beat up on ourselves so you know so much and say mean things and anything else somebody ever said to us that was mean. That's what we say. And we're, we don't give ourselves the same love that we give people around us. And so the music holds vibrations. You know, music is a conductor. And so the, mu the music, when we listen to peaceful music and still music, it really helps us get into those states of mind where we can be more loving toward ourselves and others because we just relax and release. And right. yeah, I like to talk about, um, do you mind if I just <laughs> keep going? Yeah, still yeah, go ahead. So I was saying before that I'm multi-genre because I've, you know, I, I've played this big dance music, you know, very up-tempo, very fun dance music. And I'm a guitarist and I grew up, you know, playing rock and roll and fusion and, you know, studied great guitar players. And then the music that started coming out in my music studio was this meditation music, which was actually a, a bit of a surprise. So I didn't want to go in one direction 
you know, it's funny, so many people, you know, even uh, Ariel in the beginning, when we first met, she's like, well, pick your genre. I was like, but I can't, I can't, I can't say I'm new age artist. You know, I can't say, you know, I'm just a, you know, a, a jazzy player. So I came up with this idea of still chill thrill. Still is music for meditation. Chill is music for activation, which I could explain in a minute. And thrill is music for celebration. And all of that, so there's music to accompany all of these states of being that we go through. Yeah. yeah. So I'm a big fan of all that. And I like to play all those kinds of music. And that's what's gonna be represented in our uh, music festival as well. It's gonna be a little bit of everything. Awesome. I can't wait. I hope that I can make it. I have to check again on on what day it is. What day Monday, is it? Monday, September 21st is International Day of Peace. And okay. our concert is going to start at four and go till nine. This is Eastern Standard Time. Okay. And I'm co-hosting um, with my partner, Shay Condro. She is in, in Sedona, Arizona. And we're both going to be coming on to Zoom. And then we have we're going to be streaming out with an OBS, um, with a broadcasting system, and streaming to Facebook and also to Awake TV. Awake TV, uh, Amanda and John run this beautiful network that's just geared toward the upliftment of human consciousness. And all of their programming is, is toward this idea of opening and expanding. And they have a lot of teachers and hosts that have some, you know, a lot of sacred wisdom. And they have, they uh, broadcast my show, Groove Into Bliss, which I've been doing twice a month since the pandemic happened. And Shay, I was uh, saying before, she's a, a Shay Kondro, Sherib Shay Kondro. She is, uh, she teaches meditation, by the way. I should send you her information. She's a, a beautiful Absolutely. man. Absolutely. <laughs> And she's also an artist and a sculptor and a sacred arts. As a matter of fact, the backdrop behind me it are her paintings. Oh, that's uh, awesome. She painted these. She actually did these for the Sedona Yoga Festival last year. And they're paintings that were printed on fabric banners. Mm -hmm. And her art is also uh, on this album cover. This is mm -hmm. a thing. And I also, all my jewelry is Shay. She's <laughs> This is, this is my butterfly and everything is transformational figures. They're yeah, they're eerie. beautiful. So that's um, um, Sherib, uh, sheribkondro.com. So we're, she produces the whole month of events and there's a, our website, uh, our, our Facebook page is called Follow the Peace Trail. And every week there are pr several programs. There's one tomorrow night on, um, well, she's been doing, having different guests talk about things like conflict right. resolution and sustainability and and all kinds of ways that we can have this awareness to spread and share more peace and love in our world. So this is um, a really exciting time. We gear up for this all year. She plans what, all year inspiring programs for this month of peace and throughout, of course. That sounds amazing. That's awesome. What was it? It's called Follow the Peace Trail? Follow the Peace Trail is the Facebook page. Awesome. And the, yes, and then the flagship event is the concert. It's called the mm -hmm. uh, Groove Into Bliss Peace Day Music Festival. And then after that, there's two more weeks of, of programs. Right. That's so awesome. we're, yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah. Um, just to shift gears a little bit back into um, the festival. Did you, you know, find it difficult to find artists who wanted to participate or how did you guys go about finding artists? Well, this was um, really just reaching out to friends and people, you know, friends and people that we collaborate with. Um, and there's about 25 uh, uh, presenters, four, five, oh wow, each day it's a little more speakers, people that are gonna speak short, you know, five to 10 minutes mm -hmm. of few guided meditations. And the rest are music, and some of them are going to be live performances. People are going to stream in, and about about maybe six or seven of them, are people are sending in videos, and we're going to play their videos because. And we have a friend who's going in in Russia. He's going to be streaming in with his band, doing a little performance, and we have somebody awesome. from Russia, uh, from India, who's going to be streaming in, and we have people from all over the country. So it's been friends, and we've had a really positive response everybody has been 
uh, yet yeah, he's excited about it and, and wants to do it. And, you know, this is a, a not-for-profit and nobody's getting paid for it. And it's really in service. It's in service to want to have this platform and have the opportunity to hold space on this day of peace, to share our messages and just keep pushing through this message in different ways. You know, this festival, it's not its not really about entertainment. And, you know, I mean, of course it's entertaining, but it's about intention. And it's about using the gifts that we have to connect and, and put our hearts together. Because, you know, the power of the group and the, the more people that focus their intentions and positive vibrations together, you know, this is what little by little by little, Shay likes to talk about small acts, small acts of immeasurable benefit. That is the little small things that we do, that we can each do, each moment, those choices we can make, can make huge shifts. And we, we really believe in just putting our, our consciousness and our attention on what we want to see in the world and not looking at and spending too much time feeling bad about and worrying about the things that are happening because we believe that our thoughts create our reality. Right. So that's really what the spirit is behind the Peace Day Music Festival and the whole follow the Peace Trail. Right, that's awesome. I love that. Manifesting is everything, 100%. Absolutely. Um, what? Sorry, I missed that. No, I agree. I was just <laughs> agreeing with you. <laughs> awesome. Um, so how have you guys been, you know, kind of marketing the festival? Has it been mostly word of mouth or has social media played into it a lot? Totally. Social media all the way. I would say that because when events are online, this is what I found. And, and even for myself with learning about what people I'm interested in are doing, if I know because we're not going out and because we're not getting in the car and going and having to you know, buy tickets and make reservations, it tends to be more last minute. So we've been waiting until we're closer up to start talking about what's going on in broadcasting because people could forget. My friend Johanna Beekman had a, a, a music festival last night introducing a new music video of hers called Mantra Sangha for health and wellness, health and healing. And I was so excited about it. I saw the uh, Facebook post. I got the email. I was like, oh, I'm not going to miss this. And then I got a text message from her five minutes before showtime saying, don't, you know, don't forget to go on. I was like, oh my God, I forgot to go on. I would have forgotten. So um, I think that in this climate and in this scenario that close up messages, you know, and, and text it. So basically we're promoting with partner, creative partners, people that are involved with it are going to be shouting it out through their own channels. Um, Facebook, there's a Facebook page. There's a page for the event itself. I have a web page for it. We have, um, uh, Shay and I are each sending out a newsletter and then all of our presenters are going to share through their own channels as well. So that's really how we're doing it. Um, it's interesting these days too, you do a broadcast and you have a certain number of people, but by the next day, right. times a hundred have, mm -hmm. have looked at the video. So it's up there and people come back and they revisit. And exactly. So yeah, it's, it's, it's so interesting kind of getting used to this new normal and this new landscape that we have. Yeah, it is definitely a very new, very new normal. And people's minds are just not as sharp right now. You know, there's like a million things to think about. So definitely I agree directly texting people and directly emailing people has definitely been helpful. Yeah. Do you have any other suggestions? You work for a PR company. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you could throw you could throw a boosted post out there on Facebook. You could do an Instagram ad if you wanted to, but I think you guys have been doing a really good job of organically, you know, reaching people and getting people involved. Thank you, thank you for that. And we will, we do appreciate and will appreciate your your help too, because you know we know that. You know, when people have trusted trusted professionals, it really means a lot, you know, when you guys say, hey, this is something, you know, this is something worth watching and worth tuning into. And it really yeah. means a lot to us. Yeah, yeah. and Ari I believe Ariel is confirmed 
Oh, that's the other thing. Arielle is going to be speaking. She's going to be speaking at the conference, and uh, I have her kicking off my concert. I'm uh, for me. I'm going to do the seven to eight o'clock spot uh, with my own music, and the rest of the festival. I'm going to play a little bit throughout the five hours, and everybody else. Oh, the other hours, we're doing five minute, ten minute, fifteen minute spots. But at seven o'clock, we're kind of doing the uh, a larger, a larger concert, and uh, Shay will welcome Ariel. Ariel will do her her part and then we go into my concert amazing so, yeah we, we hope everybody in your world is going to come on and and listen to what she has to say yeah we'll definitely obviously we're going to promote it do you guys already have like swipe copy written and graphics made up Yes, well, we have some. We still, uh, the next thing that we want to do is to come up with a graphic with music as a video to put on in between. And if you have a technical problem or before you're, you, we, we actually go live. So we're working on that. But we have some nice graphics for the event. Very colorful, very festive and colorful and, and, and fun. And that's really the spirit of what we're trying to do. You know, it's it's supposed to be really fun and happy and joyful and homey and you know full of connection and full of heart yeah it sounds like it I'm excited. i didn't know what a tile was until yesterday till ariel asked me if i had one i was like what's a tile and then <laughs> i got the one you sent me today so i learned something new yep awesome um okay this is the last question i have and we have about 10 ish minutes left so if anybody else has any questions anyone watching feel free to throw them in the comments uh, but the last question I had was, what was the biggest challenge in, you know, putting this whole thing together? Well, I would say that the, the biggest challenge for me personally was wrapping my mind around the fact that I wasn't really going to be having a band and I wasn't going to be playing live to an audience. Right. You know, that, that's still an adjustment. It's very different. It's very different. And it's a lot more complex to try to, to mic up, a, you know, to have a band and try to do something like this. You know, we're in a smaller space. We're supposed to be social distancing anyway. Uh, it's not, we don't have like a big sound system and a big, uh, but I do have a really lovely tech crew, tech t uh, friends that are coming to to help us with our broadcast and, and with the cameras. But I think that the thing that was the most challenging, well, and the other thing too is I'm used to having a, a company and a pro and producers to, to produce right. my events. And a lot of my events are, are traveling. My band and I, were, we get on an airplane and, and we do like a, a one-off. We go to different cities and, mm -hmm. and do these private events. And there's a whole office full of people that that pr produce the events and prepare for us. Something like this, uh, Shay and I are doing all the details ourselves, and it's a lot. It's just a lot yeah. of details. And and I feel, I, and I was saying to her yesterday, I I want to be working on the music, but but here I am on social media, and I'm you know writing the post, I'm writing the newsletter, and I'm and I'm coordinating musician sound check times, and and there's a lot of detail. So that is, it's fun. I mean, it's a labor of love, and but and it's challenging just to make sure you. And I, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. The biggest thing I will tell you, the biggest thing is is crossing your fingers that all the technology works. Because yeah. we had a, a big broadcast here the other day and the power went out. You know, the wind blew and the power went out. And then I had all my neighbor's generators going on and I didn't have a generator. And Shay was actually teaching an online meditation class. She was about to go on, power went on. So we scooped up our stuff and the computers and we drove over to our neighbor's house that has a generator and we did it from there. Right. That is the biggest challenge. I have a friend who, is a, a really a master uh, tech guy in, in Sedona, Arizona. And he he's, uh, did a big, a big part of Burning Man this year, which was virtual. And he was telling us his advice, he had two pieces of advice. He said, first of all, you have to be prepared that no matter what you do, you can go live and every, all your tech can fail. And right. so you just have to know that. And then the other piece is, this is an imperfect medium and it's not designed we're not designed to be doing big music concerts like this. And so you do your best, you know, everybody I think has an awareness that, you know, something might happen and we just have to roll with it. You know, if things go down, we have to have a plan B and just to be relaxed with it and not freak out like we would at a live event if something, you know, if something right. happened, you know, we have to be a lot more gentle with ourselves, I think, and each other. 
Yeah, I mean, you saw today I had some some technical difficulties getting on here. <laughs> it happens, and I do this every week. You know, it just it sometimes it happens. Yeah, yeah, but it really hasn't been that challenging because I haven't done it yet. I mean, we're not here yet. <laughs> but right. I, well, the more prep you do, the smoother the smoother things go. And then if things can get a little wonky, then you just yeah, you just roll yeah. roll with it. Roll with the punches. Yeah, I've learned. I've learned that. I've learned that it's in my nature and it's in my training to just always be professional. But I also learned that when things can get a little wonky, you know, just being human is fine. I think people appreciate it, and sometimes I it, that's really empowering for me to remember that and to learn that because I'm so used to, you know, running everything and having everything be be just so and be so buttoned up. But when things do happen, it does give an opportunity for us to be more human and just sort of say, okay, well, you know, we're just yeah. doing our best. Absolutely. I'm totally okay agree. I'm not okay with that. Yeah. Because I've been doing, um, since March, I've been doing an online show, Move Into Bliss, and I've never performed all by myself before. I have this, the, I want to call it the luxury of having a 15-piece band with me always, for the most part. Uh, doing, you know, all of, you know, not so much. Yeah, even my original music, I, I put a big band together that has a regular uh, rhythm section and singers, and then Eastern instruments, you know, and to really kind of get the flavor of of the music of, on my albums. And I always wanted to be able to go perform alone, but I didn't quite know how I was going to do that. And once this pandemic happened, and there were no gigs, and I did want to. Uh, not just perform, but share this message, you know, use this medium and this time that everybody was home and people were feeling so out of sorts to say, okay, great, let's take this meditation music and let's put it forth. And let's, And so I had to learn how to work with my, I, was, I have a recording studio here in my house, um, very lucky that I have that. And so I was creating tracks that I could play along with and I have been getting used to it. Uh, but nothing takes the place of playing with musicians, that kind of magic that happens and that, you know, kind of the camaraderie and the collaboration when we yeah. join our energy. But I will have one friend with me when I do my, the concert for Peace Day. My Gideon Luke McKinney, he is the most uh, beautiful, amazing uh, singer, person, friend. We've collaborated on songs together. He has a band called Gideon Luke and the People, and he sings with me in the Starlight Orchestra. So we have a lot of projects together. He flew out to Sedona last year for our Peace Day Music Festival. So he's going to be here, and we're going to we're gonna serve together. Yeah, great, awesome. Okay, we are just about out of time, so we can call it. It was great having you on here. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'm so excited about the festival. It's September 21st for everyone. Um, like Eastern what? Standard Time and my concert's at seven. Okay, there you go. And Ariel will be speaking very shortly before that. Yes, yeah, she's gonna be speaking at seven. Perfect. All right. Thank you thank so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me and thank Ariel so much too. Yeah, of course. Of course. Thanks for being here. Okay. Bye. Bye. bye.